and presto, that's how to get drugs out of Python. Picture this, you're lying in a hospital bed. It's dark, you're all alone. You haven't seen a nurse or a doctor for what feels like hours. And to add to the misery, you're dazed and confused from all the painkillers you've had. Now this scenario isn't fake. It actually happens in a number of hospitals around the world today. And this exact problem is what my co-founder and I were trying to solve when we were building our startup named Hippo. Specifically, what we were trying to do was enhance the patient experience so that when a patient went through a hospital, they would have a lot more certainty about what was going to be happening during their hospital stay. This would help improve how they were able to transition through the process, reduce the number of readmissions and improve the experience overall. Now, admittedly, the startup didn't quite work out, but I did get one great thing out of it. I learned how to apply cutting edge technologies to modern problems to be able to improve people's lives. One of the problems that we had to go through was how can we identify patients quickly and efficiently? When you're in a hospital environment, going through that process, there's a whole heap of stuff happening. There's a whole heap of people under pressure, right? So the last thing that you wanna be doing is having to enter in a password, try to authenticate, get blocked, maybe have to reset your password. So what we actually devised was a system which used optical character recognition through a phone to be able to scan a patient's wristband to be able to uniquely identify them. This would allow them to seamlessly authenticate into the system to be able to identify themselves and start using the application. Pretty cool, right? Well, the topic of this video is exactly that. We're gonna be doing a deep dive into OCR and its applications. Specifically, we're gonna be taking a look at how you can use it for prescription medication label extraction. This means that you'll be able to automatically extract the text from a prescription bottle. That being said, there are a whole bunch of use cases where OCR can be used in the wild, including Google's visual translation service. So this is actually a practical implementation a large number of companies that process paper-based forms actually use OCR to extract the text out of those. In fact, one of the most popular models and one of the most famous is that built by Jan LeCun. He actually created a handwritten digital detection model, and there's actually a great video of this out there on YouTube. Now, in this video, we're going to dig into Paddle OCR. This is a model that was originally developed by the engineers of Baidu and referenced in a paper named PP OCR, a practical ultra lightweight OCR system. This model is built on top of an existing popular text recognition deep learning model called CRNN, which uses the mobile net V3 model as a backbone network connected to a head network, which in ways mimics what a feature pyramid network does for object detection. I'll actually link to the paper in the description below. That being said, it's super fast, super accurate, and super interesting to use. So ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so we, in order to go through our drug label extraction, what we're gonna need to do is three key things. So first up, what we're gonna do is install and import our dependencies. Then we're going to instantiate the model and detect, so may actually extract the text from those images. And I've got some images that I'll share with you. And then what we'll do is we'll also visualize the results. So the nice visualization you saw right at the start of the video, that's what we're going to do by the end. So you'll actually be able to extract all of the text or all of the specific text from an image. So first up, what we need to do is install and import dependencies. And as per usual, this entire tutorial is going to be available in the description via GitHub. So if you want to pick up the code and just kick things off, you definitely can do that. Now, before we get started, what we need to do is install some stuff. So the install is reasonably straightforward and there's a whole heap of instructions via the Paddle OCR repo. So you can actually access all of this. It's all open source, so you can do quite a fair bit with it. So we are specifically going to go scroll on down. And again, I'll include this link in the description below. So it's available via github.com forward slash Paddle Paddle forward slash Paddle OCR. If you scroll on down, there is a section called installation. And if you go, I think I used this setup. So what you can do is you can leverage the installation through here. So this is basically saying if you have a CUDA 9 or CUDA 10 or CUDA 9 or CUDA 10 installed on your machine, you can use this. So this is specifically if you're going to be leveraging a GPU on your machine. If you're doing this on Colab, use this version because it's going to leverage the GPU. So specifically, I'm going to copy this. 
and then head back on over into our Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to include an exclamation mark, then paste this in, and I can get rid of the Python 3. So this is our first installation line. So this is the GitHub repo, uh, repo installation of Paddle. So there's two parts to the installation. First up, you need to install the Paddle Paddle library, which is sort of like the underlying framework. And then we actually go on ahead and install Paddle OCR. So what we've done there is we've gone to the Paddle OCR GitHub repo. We've gone and selected installation, which is over here. And then from there, we've just scrolled on down to the guide and we've gone and copied this line. Now, if you're using a CPU, then what we're going to do is copy this line and run that. But in this case, we're going to be using a GPU. So we're going to be copying this over. So let's go and run that. And as soon as that's done, what we can then go on ahead and do is install Paddle OCR. So you can see that's all done successfully. This is just a warning. You can ignore that. So the next thing that we want to go on ahead and do is install Paddle OCR. So install Paddle OCR. And in order to do this, it's just a regular pip install. So to do this, we just type in pip install Paddle OCR and run that cell. Cool, that one ran relatively quickly. So you can see that that's all done. Again, I'm just getting a pip warning because I need to upgrade my version of pip, but that pretty straightforward. So we install Paddle Paddle first and then install Paddle OCR. Now there is one additional thing that you do need to do. So you do need to clone the Paddle OCR repo. And this is for a very specific reason. Namely, it's actually going to look for a number of specific fonts when we actually go to visualize our results down here. Now I've already got it cloned. So if I run this, we might get an error, but let's try it anyway. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to clone this entire Paddle OCR repo. So if we copy this and type in, uh, so I'm just gonna write a comment, so clone, Battle OCR repo. So if I just put in an exclamation mark, git, git clone. And if you don't have git installed on your machine, you might need to install it. So I believe um, there's a GitHub installation run through on a Windows machine. I believe on Mac, it might already be there. If you get stuck with that, again, hit me up in the comments below. I can help you out. All right, so what we're going to go on ahead and do now is clone the OCR repo. So you can see, saying fail, fatal destination path paddle OCR already exists and it's not an empty directory. So I've already got it cloned. So let me show you what it looks like. Paddle OCR. So inside of my folder, I've already got this paddle OCR repo installed. So you can see, or cloned, not installed. So let me show you. So you can see that everything here is the same stuff that you would get out of the regular GitHub repo. So you can see, let me bring that over to the side. So you can see all of these folder structures have been cloned into this repository. Now, in order for you to do this, you just need to run this line here. So exc uh, exclamation mark, git clone, and then the link to paddle OCR. So HTTPS forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash paddle paddle forward slash paddle OCR. And that is our installation now done. So let's actually take a look at what we've done so far. So we first up went and installed Paddle Paddle, and we did that through the link that's available inside of the Paddle OCR GitHub repo. We then went and installed Paddle OCR. So this is the specific OCR library. And then what we've gone and done is we've gone and cloned the Paddle OCR repository. And this is specifically to get the fonts, get fonts, or visualization. Cool, all right, so that's done. The next thing that we wanna do is actually import our dependencies. So, so far we've installed a bunch of stuff. Now what we need to do is import them into our notebook. So let's go on ahead and do this. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room here because it's looking a little squashed. All right, cool, that's looking better. So what we're gonna do now is import our dependencies. And again, all this code is gonna be available via GitHub. So you can just pick this up and run with it if you want to. So let's do this. Alrighty, so I've now gone and imported uh, or written four different lines. So let's take a look at what we wrote there. So I wrote from Paddle OCR, import Paddle OCR. So this is our main Paddle OCR class, which is what we're going to use to instantiate our model down here. Then I've also imported draw OCR, which is our draw OCR method, which we're going to use to visualize our results in step three. Then I've gone and imported matplotlib. So from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. So this just helps us visualize images if we need to. 
I've then gone and imported CV2. So import CV2. And this is, uh, this is not CV2. It's actually open CV. And then we've gone and imported OS. So this is going to be for our folder directory navigation. So this is for plotting images, plot images. And this over here are our main OCR dependencies. Okay, so four lines. So we've gone and imported some stuff from Paddle OCR, some stuff from Matplotlib, gone and imported OpenCV, and we've gone and imported the OS library. Now it's time to actually instantiate our model. So that is step one now done. We're now up to step two. So what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate our model and actually we're going to extract the text from a couple of, uh, what was it? Prescription drug capsules, right? So let's take a look at our images first. So I've got this image here which is a little bit small, but yeah, you can kind of see that. All right, so we're going to be able to extract all of the text on here. And obviously we don't have a person's name for privacy reasons, but we could definitely extract that if we had it on there. Um, so I've got another one. So this one's actually got three images, which could be interesting. We'll see how our paddle is able to handle that. And then we've got one other one, which is presents a slight bit of an additional challenge, right? Because this is on an angle. Now, one of the cool things is that we're actually able to use Paddle OCR on a shifted image. So you'll see that in a second towards the end. So we're gonna to try to extract all of the text from each one of these images. Now, again, if you wanted to do this on other images, so in this case, I've got some number plates, this would work as well, but we're gonna focus on how to do this for drug label extraction, because this is super useful, right? So say, for example, you've got um, an elderly person in your family and uh, you needed to try to work out what drug uh, databases or what drugs they've actually got at the moment. If you had like an app which allows you to scan your thing or if, even if you had um, an elderly person which is a little bit more familiar with tech they would be able to scan their drug bottle and work out what it is they're actually looking at um, they might even be able to have the output read out to them so they might not need to put on their glasses they can actually have this exported so there's a whole lot of practical implementations or applications for this um, i think in my particular case Okay, so what we are going to do now is instantiate our model. So let's do this. Cool, that's our model instantiated and we're done now. So there's a whole bunch of options that you can pass through to this setup. We've just kept it pretty lightweight and we've specifically gone and set it up to work with the English language. Now, this was built by the Baidu team in China. So there's actually a fully supported version that supports Chinese characters, which I think is absolutely amazing. Now, in this particular case, the single line that we've gone and written is OCR equals paddle OCR. And this is in caps. So remember we're using this class that we imported from up here. And then we've gone and passed through one keyword parameter, which is a lang to specify the language that we want to use. And we've set that equal to EN for English. Right, so this is setting up at which character model we actually want to use. So in this case, we're going to be able to reference the OCR variable when it comes to actually making our detections. Cool. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go and set up a path to our image. So we've got three images. So I've got one called drug one, drug two, and drug three, and they're all JPEGs, I believe. So that's a JPEG file, so .jpg, .jpg, and .jpg, cool. So we just need to be able to specify a path to actually navigate to that specific image. So let's go on ahead and create this. So I'm gonna create a variable called image path. And we're gonna set this equal to os.path.join. And we're gonna specify that we wanna be in our current directory and we're going to pass through a full stop or a yeah, full stop. And then we're gonna pass through the actual name of the image. So in this case, we're gonna do drug one first dot jpg and that is our image path so if we take a look all we're doing is we're specifying the path to the current image now if we had a, our images inside of a specific folder like an images folder then you would just be passing through the subdirectory so we would be passing through something that looks a bit like that right so you'd have image and then the drugs but in this case we've got it in the same folder as our Jupyter notebook so we're cool to label it like that now, what we actually want to do is actually make some detection. So let's actually try this out. So we can type in result equals OCR dot OCR and then pass through our image path. And that is our OCR done. So you saw how quick that was, right? 
a key feature of this model is specifically how fast it is. Now, what I've gone and written there is I've gone and created a new variable to hold our OCR result. So I've called that result. And then in order to use the OCR function, we first up use the OCR class, which is this over here. And then we've gone and called the OCR method, a little bit confusing, but think about this as this is our OCR model. And then we're going to be using our OCR method on it. So we could just as easily call this OCR method here or OCR model. And then down here, we could call this OCR model dot OCR. So we're basically saying, use our OCR model to perform OCR. And then to that, we're passing through our image path. And then all of our results should be inside of this variable called results. So if we take a look at that, you can see we've actually got our results here. So it's actually gone and extracted. So what you can see here is each bit of this is actually representing the text that it actually saw in that image. So it's got KX Pharmacy, it's got 50 uh, microgram tablets, take one tab tablet, it looks like it's got that little bit wrong, every day, quantity 90, may refill by, and then it's got a date, it's got a date down here as well. Pretty cool, right? So if we wanted to get a specific value, let's take a look at the type of this result. So if I type in type and then result, so we can see it's a list, that means we can just use standard list indexing to get our results out. So if I type zero, that's going to bring out our first line. And let's actually take a look at our image. Uh, so we did drug one. Uh, where are we? So drug one, and you can see it's gone. And uh, so it's interpreted that as a K, so rather than an X, but again, still pretty good, right? So it's got KX pharmacy. And then these are the coordinates for where the text is in our image. So if we wanted to grab that, that is the first part. So this is our box coordinates. Is that a comment box coords? And then if we actually wanted the text result, and then it's going to be zero. So this is going to give us our first line. And then if we grab uh, index one, this is actually giving us our text. Now this looks like it's a tuple. So we, again, we should be able to extract this. So let's take a look at our type. Cool, tuple. So what we can do to get the specific text is just grab object zero. And you can see there that that is extracting this line over here, right? Let's make this bigger. So that is extracting this line. Now, if we wanted the second line, we again can just go to the second line. So the second line it's extracting is 50 microgram tablets. So you can see that there. So we can grab the second result. So the second result is going to be index one. So those are our box coordinates, index one, 50 microgram tablets. How sick is that? Honestly, I've like, this is so quick to run, like from an OCR perspective, if you think about the amount of engineering that's actually happened behind this model and we've just written like what, let's take a look. So we instantiated our model and then we ran it in two, li two lines of code to be able to go and perform advanced OCR. Absolutely nuts. I think it's absolutely amazing. So we're actually able to extract this text out. Now, again, you could do this. Um, I think you could probably even do this in real time if you wanted to. Um, if you wanted to go and extract all the text, then what we could actually do is go and grab every single label out of this. So how would we do it? So we'd grab all of that. Uh, that's not working. We could actually just loop through. So, uh, so for res in result. Let's drop this down. And where is our result again? So our text is in... So what we could do is just uh, return or print res one zero, right? And that is going to print out just our text. So this is the first line, second line, the third, third line, which is that every day quantity 90 max refill. And then it's sort of cutting off there. And then we've also got our date down the bottom. Pretty cool, right? So this allows us to quickly access the text that we've got in images. So let's quickly take a look at what we wrote there because we went through quite a fair bit. So first up, what we did is we set up our model and remember we used the paddle OCR class from up here to be able to do that. We then went and specified our image path. So remember, we're just going and grabbing drug one to be able to go and do this. Then in order to actually run our model, let's actually add a comment to so run the OCR method on the OCR model. And that actually gives us our result back. And that's what our result looks like. And then we're actually able to extract the box coordinates if we wanted to, as well as the text. 
but again really easily we're able to grab this text out so you saw that uh, we can actually loop through and grab each one of these now if we wanted to just do this um, inside of a list comprehension we could do that as well so i could just return it like this uh, we'll leave that i'll do it in another line so i could type in uh, res in lowercase res one zero or res in result right and now we've got all of that text stored inside of a list so if you wanted to go and output this if you wanted to go and do a search against the database you could definitely do that as well let's actually try doing it with a, another image so we'll come back to this one um, a little bit later when it comes to visualizing so let's go do it with drug two actually let's go through one full pipeline and then we'll come back and do it with another image so the next thing that we want to go on ahead and do is visualize our result. So we're now up to step three. So that is step two completely done. So we've gone and instantiated our model and made some detections. Now what we're up to is visualizing our results. So let's go on ahead and do this. So first up, what we need to do is extract the boxes, the text components and the scores into uh, so similar to how we just did it over here. So we're going to perform a list comprehension to extract each one of these into a separate variable which we're then going to pass through to our draw OCR method from up here. So let's go on ahead and do this first up. Cool, so that is our set of boxes, our text and our scores now exported. So if we take a look at boxes, those are all of our box coordinates and these are just our bounding box. So if you think about how we've gone and performed object detection before, rather than specific or extracting specific objects, we're extracting specific text components. So those are our boxes, that's our text, and these are our scores. Cool, right? And so these are our confidence metrics. So in this particular case, our first line has an 89% confidence, second one, 91%, third one, 94, 88. So you sort of get the idea, right? Now let's take a look at what we wrote. So this first line is just performing a list comprehension on our result object, which is, let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, yeah, we don't need that. We don't need that. Uh, let's get rid of that as well. And we don't need that. Cool. So this is a little bit cleaner. So this first line here is basically going to this result object and it's looping through and it's grabbing the first value, right? Which is going to be this over here. So these are, represent our box coordinates. Then the second line, and again, so we're basically using a list comprehension. So for res in result, we're extracting the first component from that individual result, which again is going to be these coordinates that you can see there. So specifically that, right? Second line is doing something similar, but rather than looping through and getting the boxes, it's grabbing the text. So similar to what we did over here. So this is exactly the same, this, is exactly the same as this except we're using a list comprehension and we're storing our results inside of a variable called text then the third line is doing the exact same line as text but rather than getting the text we're grabbing the score because remember if you take a look at this last tuple it's got two components it's got the text that it's been or that it's actually detected and it's actually got the probability or the confidence metric which you can see there and so now we've got each one of these values stored inside a variable. So remember, we've got boxes, we've got text, and we've got scores. Probably call this text something just to keep it consistent. So text, cool. All right, now what we actually want to do is we first need to specify the path to our fonts. Now, this is specifically why I said go down and clone the Paddle OCR repository because in order to actually use the draw OCR method, we need to have a path to our specific fonts. We actually take a look inside of the Paddle OCR repository. And if you go into, let me make this bigger. If you go into doc, uh, and then where was it again? It was inside fonts, uh, which you can see there. And there's a whole bunch of different fonts. So what we need to do is pass it through to uh what is it i think it's a latin one for english so the latin one over here but you can see there's a whole bunch of different um language repositories so if you wanted to do it in hindi you could in japanese telugu urdu spanish uh there's a whole bunch available here which is actually pretty cool right in this case we need to specify a path to this latin text file so it's going to be latin.ttf so let's go on ahead and create a path let's add some more space as well so uh, we need to specify a font path 
we're going to set that equal to os.join and then pass through so what was it it was paddle ocr comma doc comma fonts and then it was ladin.ttf cool so that is basically pointing to this so if we take a look the file format is ttf let me zoom in you can see it's ttf there so we're basically just creating a path to point to that for our english detection now what we need to do is actually load up our image so this is where opencv is going to come in so let's add some comments on here so this is specifying our font path for the draw ocr method and over here we're just extracting detected components save that and let's run this cell uh, this should be os.path.join all right cool so that is now done so this line that we've just gone and written here so we've gone and specified font underscore path equals os.path.join and then we've basically gone and passed through the specific path to this ladin.ttf font so first our paddle ocr then doc then fonts then ladin.ttf now what we want to go on ahead and do is import our image which remember was drug one drug two and drug three so we're going to do drug one first up so let's go on ahead and do this cool that is our image now imported so i've gone and written two lines there so first up we're using the cv2.im read method to read in our image so what i've written is image equals cv2.im read and then we've passed through our image path which we defined over here then what i've gone and done is i've gone and recolored the image so by default whenever we import an image using OpenCV, it's going to bring it in as bgr we want it as rgb so this is exactly what this line over here is doing so for that line we've written image equals cv2.cvt color and then we've gone and passed through this image so this is the the raw image and we've gone and passed through the color conversion code so cv2.color underscore bgr to rgb so this one imports the image this one recolors or oh, actually it reorders the color channels cool that's now done now the next thing that we need to do is just go on ahead and visualize our image so let's create a comment visualize our image and detections cool so let's go on ahead and do this okay those are our lines or oh, that's pretty much our visualization code now done now before i run this let's take a look at what we wrote so first up what we're doing is we're resizing our or we're resizing our display area so this is resizing sizing display area and the line that we've written there is plot dot figure and then we've gone and passed through a keyword argument fig size equals 15 by 15. so this basically means that when we go and visualize our image using matplotlib we're going to have a bigger region to actually display the image then we're actually going on ahead and using the draw ocr method to visualize our annotations so draw annotations on image and what I've written there is annotated and so basically our annotated image is going to be called annotated now and we've gone and used the draw OCR method which we imported right up here and to that we've passed through a bunch of things so we've gone and passed through the image that we just imported over here we've then gone and passed through the boxes from over here the text and remember these are the texts that are coming from our results variable the text the scores and then we've gone and passed through the font path which is what we specified over here so basically we've gone and passed through one two three four five different things to be able to go and use our draw ocr function then the last line is actually showing the image show the image using matplotlib so let's actually take a look at that so we've written plot dot i am show and then to that we've gone and passed through our annotated image which is this over here so let's actually uh make this a little bit clearer so i'm just going to reshape where these comments are because it's looking a bit messy 
and my OCR, uh, my OCD, my OCR is kicking in. Um, so let's go and move this. So this is resizing our area. This is drawing on our annotated image. And then this is showing our image using matplotlib. If we run that, take a look at that. How cool is that? So this is actually going and extracting each bit of text from our image, which you can see there. And it's actually printing out all of our annotations on the right here. So you can see that we've now gone and built up our drug extraction pipeline, our drug text extraction pipeline. It's not making drugs. It's actually just extracting the text. Calm down, Nick. So you can see there that really quickly, we're actually able to go and extract our components. And if you actually break down what we wrote, we haven't actually written that much code. So to actually go and run the OCR, you just set up the model, use the OCR method, and then to go and visualize, you basically run through this pipeline here. But again, all this code is going to be available in the description below, so you can do it. So let's take a look at our result. So you can see that this is the same image that we had from over here, right? So same thing, it's obviously blown up a little bit. But then what we've got is we've actually got the text that we've extracted from this. So it's extracted this as KX Pharmacy, and it's got a confidence of 0.894. We've got 50 microgram tablets, 0.915. It's got take one tablet by, take one tablet, and then it's got BL, so 0.94% confidence. We've got every day, we've got quantity 90, that's pretty accurate. Uh, may refill 4X by 12-01. I can't believe that it's actually gone and got that. That is actually ridiculous. So it's actually extracted that text from that there. And it's also gone and grabbed the date as well. So 12-01, it looks like it's missed the second dash, but that's fine, 2019. So again, pretty, pretty good on a pretty low quality image, to be honest. These are just random images I went and got off Google. So again, pretty good. If you actually had high resolution images, I'm guessing this will be significantly better as well. Just another thing to keep in mind. Let's actually go and do it on another image now. So we went and did it on our image one, and I promised we'd go and do it on our other image. Now, the nice thing about this is that we've actually gone and built up a whole pipeline. So in order to do this on another image, all we need to do is go and change this image path over here. So rather than doing drug one, remember we had drug one, drug two, and drug three. So let's go and do drug two. So remember, we've now got our result. It's gone and extracted all of the different components. So remember, this one was the one with three, three bottles in it or three containers. I don't know what you'd call them, but it's basically gone and got all of these. Then again, we can print out our results. So it's gone and extracted all of this. Let's go through our visualization pipeline. So you can see it is actively extracting each one of these components. And this is a small image, guys. Like if I take a look at the dimensions of this, um, so what is it? Image dot shape. It's, what is it? Uh, 400 pixels high and 800 pixels wide. So again, it, by, it is high resolution by no means, right? So you could have way better quality images for this in this particular case. All right, so let's take a look. So detection one, CVS Pharmacy, uh, line two, I don't know what that says, Macau 300, uh, line three, Warfare and Sodium. It's gone, and I can't even see this. The quality sucks. <laughs> the actual image sucks. Let's see if we got a better image here. Oh, that's a little bit better. Let's actually take a look at what we got. Bring this over here. Uh, do, 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 where's our lines? So we've got warfarin, we've got ice uh, sodium milligram, yes, to e tablet. Uh, not quite right there. Take one tablet. Uh, this one's probably not so great. I think this this one it, again. It's a small image and it's got quite a fair bit happening everywhere. But you can still see that it is definitely extracting text. I image one actually performed way better than image two, but again, pretty cool, right? Let's go and do image three and see how we go there. Now, this the particular challenge with this one is that the text was on an angle. So if we take a look at this, you can see it's all on an angle. Now, this is traditionally a really tough thing for most OCR models to handle. So let's see how it actually performs in this particular case. So let's go and change our path again from drug two to drug three. It's done. Looks like it's extracted a bunch of stuff. Run through it. Take a look at that. So it's actually gone and done it. So it's gone and printed out pharmacy. It's got BI. So this is, I believe, going top to bottom. Uh, it's got amoxicillin, 500 milligram or W6. In this case, rather than saying milligram, it's got W6. 
it's got one capsule do we have capsule we've got mouth again so this is still a little bit challenging because you can see it's on an angle but if you had an image which is sort of facing straight again performing perfectly well what you might choose to do is when you go and build up your app you might choose to have first up have an angle detector and then shift your image from there to get a person to actually take a straight on image but again you can see performing reasonably well i still think it's performed best on our first image let's go back to drug one yeah so this is performing way better than the others and again you got a clear image you've got a single image and it's sort of topped down so it performs really really well but that sort of shows you in a nutshell how you can go and use OCR to go and extract text from a drug prescription. So again, we've gone and done it successfully there. So again, this is all the quality of your image is definitely going to impact the quality of your predictions, um, as well as the size of your image and how clear the text is. But in a nutshell, we've gone and done it. So in, the first thing that we went and did is installed and imported our dependencies. We then went and instantiated our model in step two. And then last but not least, we went and visualized our results. And that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.